Okay, so this is going to be about Putin's bloodbath. No, I mean, someone says that he actually bathes in deer antler blood. I don't know, but that's what it'll be about. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, please do like it. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. And thank you very much for watching. I'm Mark, and this is my journey through tarot. Come on. To be honest with you, I mean, I was amazed. I saw this blurb and it said what I said, deer antler blood for some sort of a cure for uh, Parkinson's or something, I don't know. I'm gonna actually wiki it, but I haven't done it yet. So I'll tell you what I get. Russian President Vladimir Putin was visited by oncology surgeon uh, and an oncology surgeon uh, specializing in thyroid cancer who flew to visit Putin at his Black Sea residence 35 times and spent 166 days in his presence. A team of doctors frequently visit uh, the 69-year-old Russian president at his residences or accompany him on trips. And uh, two uh, ear, nose, and throat specialists uh, visited uh, Putin even uh, more frequently, flying to see him 59 times and spent a total of 282 days with him between uh, 2016 and 2020. Now, to determine which doctor spent uh, time with Putin at his residence in Sochi, hotel accommodation contracts published on the government procurement website were examined. Uh, the dates doctors, which I'm surprised that exists in Russia, aren't you? And uh, But the dates doctors stayed at the hotels in Sochi coincide with Putin's official uh, visits to Sochi or periods where he mysteriously disappears from the public. An average number of medics in Putin's entourage rose from five in 2016 and 2017 to nine in 2019, plus anesthetists, anesthesiologist, I suppose, a neurosurgeon, an infectious disease specialist, and an intensive care uh, doctor. Putin is also taking up, wait for it, bathing in blood extract from severed deer antlers as a form of alternative medicine. The deer blood is believed to improve the cardiovascular system and rejuvenate the skin. And the antlers are cut from the deer while they are alive. Animal rights activists compare it to pulling out a person's fingernails. Uh, during the pandemic, Putin went into strict self-isolation and was pictured conducting meetings from one end of a very long table. The Russian president's face appears to be noticeably bloated in recent photos, suggesting that he's using uh, steroids, which are often used to treat uh, thyroid cancer. Okay, so we'll see uh, Putin's bloodbath. Let's see what the cards can tell us about that. You know, I don't really have a specific question about this insanity. Uh, just, um, let's see, let's first see if the cards will confirm that this is something that's actually happening. And then uh, we'll just ask the cards more generally uh, about Putin's uh, condition uh, aside from that. Yeah. Okay, but before we do that, let's have a moment, meditation. Okay, Putin's bloodbath. So right off the bat, let's see if the cards, in just three cards, can tell us if this is a thing he's doing. Putin's bloodbath. Is he really doing this? Three cards. Three cards. Putin, are you doing this? Okay, one, two, three. Vladimir Putin, good grief. Okay, the first card up for this, Putin, are you really doing this bloodbath stuff? Okay, so we start out with a, a page of coins. So this is a message of value. The page is the very weakest of the court cards. He's a messenger. He's bringing this message of value. So, okay, maybe. Next card, are you doing these bloodbaths? 
So now we have a choice. The Two of Swords is uh, speaks to us of having to make a choice. Would you make the same choice, uh, viewers, if uh, given that option and someone said, you've tried everything else, maybe this will make a difference? And then the last card for whether he's actually doing this bloodbath stuff is the Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold. It's not a definitive answer at all. So we say, Putin, are you, are you taking these bloodbaths? And he said, there was a, there was a message of, of, of value, a small message of value brought to him about this. He had to make a choice. Am I going to do it or am I not going to do it? It's my life. And then the final outcome is uh, being left out in the cold. Does he want to be left out in the cold? No, I don't think so. I'm going to draw one more card about this. Are you doing it? This is the three, four, five, six, seven of uh, coins. And uh, the seven of coins is, uh, you know, wondering if I've done enough. Is there more than I should be doing or haven't done enough? So, yeah, I would say all in all, uh, this sort of sounds like, yeah, he's uh, on the, uh, the side of why not. So now let's just do a full, maybe a, a dyadic cross. We'll see how it goes, whether it becomes a full Celtic cross. But let's see about Putin's uh, health. Are there serious uh, obstacles? Is he having treatment? Uh, is his health failing him? Is he looking mortality in the face? We all are, but some of us don't want to think about it. You know, it's a little bit different if you say you're perfectly well and you're 69 years old and you say, well, I'm going to die sometime in the future. But it's certainly different if you've got doctors telling you this thing that you have is uh, this, and this is the outcome typically for people who have this. Then you kind of get a feel for when. Makes a difference. Six cards to begin with. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it, it occurs to me that if he's taking steroids, which will absolutely impede his judgment, and uh, we saw what it did to Trump. He felt like Superman after that. He got saved from COVID uh, by the uh, shots, which included steroids. So the significant card as to whether uh, Vladimir Putin um, has these significant health problems. Ace, this is a yes card. Big ace of swords. Yep. The challenge to that is the nine of cups. And the nine of cups is the challenge to being this ill is having everything in the world that you would think you would need to be uh, to overcome anything that happens to you. So, yeah, that's what the nine of cups is. Cups are compassion, emotion, typically depicted in the right away deck as um, as a, a woman, very lavishly dressed. She's got money growing on trees all around her. And uh, so, yeah, so he's ill. That's the truth of it. And uh, the challenge of it is being so rich and still not being able to make a big difference. The base of this reading, then, with the Six of Cups, remembering the way things were, yeah, when you weren't sick. Past of this reading, uh, with this Ten of, oh, wow, Ten of Wands is, um, it's not the end of a, an era. Ten of Wands. We'll take a peek at my trusty uh, cheat sheet. Uh, ten of Wands. Yeah. So really, um, a heavy load to carry up the hill, wanting to be a perfectionist, trying to get all this done, and uh, not believing that uh, you can't do it. But uh, that's in the past, okay? So he's struggled with it. That's in the past. Now we're coming into reality. And the sky of this reading is the Six of Wands, and uh, the Six of Wands is victory, actually. That's interesting. So it could be that he beats this somewhere? Huh. And then the likely outcome of this, uh, with this Queen of coin. No, I'm sorry, this is a king of coins. The likely account, outcome of all of this with this king of coins that maybe he's going to beat it to some extent. So, of course, that means I need four more cards. Because um, we're going to see what four more cards do. So, is he sick? It looks like he is. The very signifier of that question comes to us in this queen of actions. Oh, yeah, trying to take all the compassionate actions that he can to uh, avoid uh, dying. In the environment of uh, this uh, one, two, four of swords. Oh, yeah. Knowing when to take a break, when to find some caution and not move forward uh, at your peril. The hopes and the fears is this nine of coins. And uh, the nine of coins, uh, again, is just uh, being uh, that uh, the, the hopes and the fears is that you have enough resources to uh, combat this successfully. And the final outcome 
with this, is this nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of wands, nine of wands is really having gone through the battle and being beat up, but you're ready for another round. I think this is really going to take the wind out of him. Just to read it again quickly, we ask, is he sick? What's wrong? Well, yeah, he is sick. We get a big yes card, the uh, ace of truth, justice, rules, and law. He's sick. And it's challenged by this nine of cups, uh, really uh, feeling like you've just got everything uh, in your favor. And then the uh, base of the whole thing is this six of cups, remembering how things were uh, in the past. Then over here with this ten of uh, wands is just really a hard load to carry. That's in the past. So he's past that now. Up in the sky, we've got the six of wands, which is victory, and then antler blood. And then the um, likely outcome of the first part of this is coming out as a king of coin, really in charge of all your value. And then the very self of the question with this uh, queen of uh, wands is, uh, you know, taking some high compassionate action. And uh, it's in the environment of uh, knowing when uh, to take a break and take a rest and let uh, things get better. Then with the uh, hopes and the fears of this, with this nine of coins, is just, um, again, having so much at your fingertips that you can't believe that you can't uh, beat this. And so you, you believe that this is what's going to save you. And then the final outcome with this ten of uh, wands, uh, or sorry, this nine of wands, is uh, having come through the battle, really beat up, but you're ready to go another round. I think he's got an ongoing sickness that is going to drag him down eventually. So that's what we had from the cards. Tell me what you think. I don't always agree with my own uh, readings. Hey, I'm going to show you the cards now. Hang on. Okay, so these are the Book of Toth, Le Livre de Toth by um, De Talier, whose name is actually, uh, was actually I, Aliet, I think. So this was France. This is back in the mid uh, 1700s. And uh, Book of Toth is uh, the problem the thing with these cards is that they don't uh, decipher like the typical rider weight cards do rider weight cards but uh, these are beautiful but I mean they're cryptic so you've got to be comfortable in the divinations you're going to use for these um, so I don't use them very much to tell you the truth but I thought they'd be good for this and of course this is just a good time to spread them out so you can see the cards you know what they look like uh, and uh, get a feel for what this deck is going to be like in just a minute. And uh, maybe you're going to uh, shoot some of your energy uh, across the uh, airwaves into this reading. Who knows? <laughs> but uh, so these are great cards. I like them. But they are hard to use if you don't use them every day, I think. I'm Mark, my journey through tarot. Tomorrow's another day. Stop by. We'll do it again. Ciao for now. really make a big difference. Thank you.